the backdrop to this album is this incredible overcomer story, which is why I felt like I had to cover it here. Trevor Powers was down and out from this terrible over-the-counter drug reaction in 2021 that caused all the stomach acid to, to come up and eventually just wore on his voice so much that he was unable to speak by the end of the year. But 2023 sees his return to his original success, Youth Lagoon, this electronic indie pop project that had strong influences from art pop and psychedelia and chamber pop. This is a review of his fourth album, Heaven is a Junkyard. Youth Lagoon seemed to get a perfect start out of the blocks in 2011 with the debut album, Year of Hibernation, which I remember as an instant critical success. The twee optimism of that debut gave way to a much more experimental second album in 2013, Wondrous Bug House. With all this psychedelic infatuation really released right in the midst of another wave of psych revival. My favorite of the bunch though was the third album, Savage Hills Ballroom, which seemed to, to strip production layers back and in turn bring out Trevor's voice and songwriting chops. It was more direct, more melody centric, and while still very steeped in the indie bedroom pop sounds of his generation, I felt like it was his most timeless work to that point. It doesn't sound dated, it doesn't sound of its time to me. You know, tracks like Highway Patrol Stun Gun and The Knower and No One Can See and Carrie remain potent and endlessly re-listenable. Like, I really do love that album and can't recommend it enough. But after that, Trevor put the project to bed and ventured into even more experimental territory on 2018's Mulberry Violence under his own name. And I respect the name change because it's not like that helped him sell any more records. You know, it's not the smartest marketing move to move away from the name that got you going and that people know. But besides that, it just sounds like a completely different project. It was colder and more electronic and much more tortured, you know, not anything like Savage Hills Ballroom and not really my cup of tea. One album later and then this drug reaction in 2021. So now we're two years after that rock bottom moment and Youth Lagoon springs forth like a phoenix. Showing an impressive level of restraint and, and subtlety with this album. The album's foundation is really powers very hoarse, a little bristly, but also very high and very impressive voice. Plus his minimal upright piano playing, which has just whispers of jazz, but mostly fits the Regina Spector mold with its melancholic and classically trained yet restrained sound. And nothing is as melodically catchy as the first three tracks here, which each have a, a very simple chorus that's easy to pick up, easy to hum along to after the fact. The opener, Rabbit, hops along with every instrument on point and this sweet little recording of a child right in the middle of the song. And I just love the drumming in the track. And the more I read into all the themes on this album, the more inscrutable they become, which I feel like is just what you want as a as an indie artist. Obviously, there are a lot of biographical details here of Power's life in Idaho, and there's an Alice in Wonderland tie-in, and there's just a lot of emotional intensity oozing from every moment. The pathos of Idaho Alien and the explicit self-harm references just make it the perfect single and statement for this album, which really is one of vulnerability. Again, the production of the drums is so good and Power's performance is, is so perfectly uh, represented by the recording and the production on his voice as well. You know, everything in the song is kept very minimal, very steady in order to draw attention to Power's syncopated performance. The next song, The Sling, feels like the emotional core of the record, even more minimal and restrained. And the production, again, is just on point. You know, the cacophonous sound of the piano, the strategically placed vocal effects, and the strings added to build up the climax of the song. It's at this stage of the record that I'm starting to feel like the production is outpacing the writing. Like the way it's mixed and adorned with care in post-production, 
production is what's really exciting to me about the record, not the songs. And I do suspect that much of the love for this album is not about the songs or the the melodies themselves. You know, it's it's more so about the general vibe and aesthetic and more cynically on the mystique of Powers as an artist, the frailty and the, the deep sense of brokenness that he presents. For me, these factors aren't all that intriguing, so it's really up to the songs to draw me in and win me over. And the second half of the album starts to confirm this suspicion, you know, songs like Mercury and helicopter toy just being so minimal and and very underwritten relying more on textures and ambiance than chordal movement and melody you know it's it's kind of common in in critical discourse you know in in music critics but really critique of any kind to post hoc rationalize your opinion you know to have a a very intuitive very immediate emotional reaction to something but then try to justify and rationalize that after the fact with all these intellectual points. But I just have to admit that much of this album really isn't for me as a fan of more adventurous, melodic, and chordal movement in music. And I think that's really the core of it. So yeah, I think the minimalism on this album, the emphasis on production and sonic flourishes over anything else, it's really my main issue. While the production itself is really well done, the writing is very vulnerable and well performed, and it has some really smart and subtle musical moments, especially in the first half. So I land at about a, a six, maybe a six and a half for this album, Heaven is a Junkyard. Savage Hills Ballroom, that's still my favorite Youth Lagoon record, and I'm probably alone in that. But let me know what you thought of this album. It's been out for a while, so it's had time to to kind of marinate with you. And of course, like the video before you leave, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching.